Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. After I posted my last video on using a combo box on an Excel form for an invoice, I received several emails from viewers. They suggested that we could also accomplish the same purpose by using a drop-down list in data validation. And that's true. So let me show you how we can use either a combo box for a drop-down list or create a drop-down list using data validation. What I want to do over here is I first want to select three cells over here and have those cells merge. So I get a nice wide area to have my product listing. So I make the selection of the three cells, come over here onto the Home tab of the ribbon, and an alignment. Notice that in Excel 2007, we have a drop down. Rather than merge and center, what I want to do is merge across. Now I want to repeat that for the uh, second row and the third row on the invoice. A great keyboard shortcut is F4. In this case, what F4 does, it repeats the last action. So our last action was to merge across. So we didn't use merge and center, we used merge across. All right, now we're ready to create our drop-down list. So what we want to do is select those first three lines where we want to have the drop-down list go to the data tab of the ribbon over here in data tools from the drop down for data validation choose data validation what we're going to be doing for the setting is we are going to be picking from a list now our list is going to come from a name range so I've created a name called product which contains all of the products that we have for sale so for the source I'll use another keyboard shortcut F3 function 3 gives me a list of the name ranges so when I select product notice that we now have equals product equals the name range now what you want to do with a drop-down list from data validation is come over here onto the error alert. Notice that there are three styles, stop, warning, and information. Of the three styles, only the stop style will actually prevent the user from entering in an item that is not in the list. So we'll put in here, pick from list. as the title and then the error message if they try to type in a product that is not in the list. So what I like to do is I like to tell the user what happened and what to do to pick an item from the list. All right, we're now ready to go back and try this out. So let's click on our first item. You notice we have a drop down over here and here is the listing. So the cantaloupes are listed over here. Let's make another selection on the second line. Now watch what will happen if I try to type something in that is not in the list. For example, watermelon. I get the error message. So you see I have that stop style. Only selections from the list are allowed. Pick an item from the list. So what I want to do is click cancel and now I'll come back and I'll pick an item from the list. All right, so we have our items over here, but now we have to actually look up what the unit price is. Now here again is a difference. When I use the combo box in order to look up the unit price, what I used was the index function. So the index function was looking in an array. It's looking in a name range called the list, which will be this grouping over here, and then it looked for the row number, which was the cell link in our lookup for the combo box, and then the column number, column 2, for the unit price. We're going to use the VLOOKUP when we use the drop-down list. So again, I'm going to be referencing this name range. Notice that when I select that name range, here's the name of that range up here. All right, so I'm going to use VLOOKUP equals VLOOKUP and I'll use the, oh, sorry, let's go back and do that again, equals VLOOKUP. And what I want to do is I want to look up a value. So the value that I'm going to look up is the name of the product from our drop-down list. Where am I going to look for it? So put a comma, our table array is called list. 
So I'm going to look in that name range called list. The column that contains the value I want to look up, the unit price, is in column number two. So I'll put column number two over there. And the final fourth optional argument is if I want to have an exact match, I'll type in false. So there I've used the VLOOKUP to be able to look for the selection that I made from the drop-down list, look in a name range called list, and then when you find the match, return the value from the second column and make it an exact match. So when I click OK, there is the price. So for cantaloupes over here in the table, $15. If I were to change my selection, for example, to make it grapes, then you'll see that it's going to look in the leftmost column. So with a VLOOKUP, when you're looking in the array, make sure that the value you want to match is in the leftmost column. So the price for grapes is $35 as you see over there. So now we're ready to copy down to row 2, row 3 our formulas for the unit price. So there you've seen that there are two ways at least to do almost anything in Excel. In this lesson I showed you how to do a drop-down list in data validation. In the previous lesson we used the combo box. Forms are found on the Developer tab in the ribbon over here in Controls, and we selected our combo box from the form controls. When we use the combo box, we also used a different formula to be able to look up our value. We used, for the combo box, the index function for the lookup value in the uh, drop-down list for data validation, we used VLOOKUP. So either way, you can create easy to use user-friendly drop-down lists with a combo box or data validation. And I'll see you in the next lesson.